Hey, what is up everyone? We are one week away from the release of Season 9 of Sea of Thieves, and in this video we're talking about everything you need to know about what's on the way. So a few days ago, Rare had a big livestream discussing the 5th anniversary of the game, as well as what to expect in Season 9. I already made a video about everything going on with the anniversary event, so definitely check that video out if you haven't already. But for now, let's focus on everything in regards to this upcoming season. So Season 9 is going to be a lot more similar to Season 5, where it's going to be lots of smaller quality of life changes rather than one or two big things. This may be disappointing to some people, however I think there's still a lot to be excited for with Season 9. So the biggest changes in Season 9 are with world events. They have been completely rebalanced both to make them less frustrating as well as now to scale and difficulty depending on the crew size. I'm excited for this because I typically play solo which means I never really do world events because they've in the past always been designed for bigger crews. Some of these world event changes include stuff like skeletons shooting cannons at the fort when no longer respawn and continue to shoot at you while you're trying to complete the fort. This is something that was very annoying in the past and it's a great example of what kind of changes to expect in Season 9. One of the big changes to the Fort of Fortune, which has now been streamlined, did not be as annoying to do. Which is great because I used to hate this world event along with the Ashen Winds event. I'm very interested to see if these changes make it more enjoyable to play. One of the more exciting parts of this season is the addition of a new treasure called the Chest of Fortune. This chest can be found at the Fort of Fortune now, and with this new chest as well as the Reaper chest, you can unlock exclusive cosmetics for the Fates of Fortune set. There's also been some changes with the Reaper's chest where they will now continue to have a beacon on them until you cash it in. I think this will be really exciting and bring back the excitement that people used to have with stealing the Chest of Legends. I really can't wait to get back into tucking and trying to steal some of these chests. Next, the Fort of the Dam got a big change. Not only with balancing the world event for all crew sizes, but also making it way easier to start the event. So now with Season 9, if you're a Pirate Legend, you can buy a brand new Captain Voyage, which gives you the new Skull of Destiny. This Skull is similar to a Ritual Skull, but it also contains all the Flames of Fate. This means all you need to do to start the Fort of the Dam is just to get this Skull and head over there. I'm very much looking forward to trying to steal this as well. There are two other new Pirate Legend Captain Voyages that have been added. One of these voyages will send you off to find Cursed Chest, whereas the other voyage will let you find gunpowder kegs like the Athena Mega Keg. This will be very nice to keep handy for trying to blow up other cruise ships. All these voyages can be bought by Pirate Legends at the Shipwright for doubloons. Moving on to something I know people will be excited for, and this is the return of the Ghost Ship event. Sadly though, this is not including Flameheart. At least though I won't have to hear Flameheart say my supplies are dwindling for the thousandth time though. We got some other nice little changes that I think people will like including a new food radio which will make it easier to choose a specific piece of food as well as the ability to sell everything that's in a collector's chest without needing to open it up. This is a great change and I'm really excited for this. Another update in Season 9 is when a ship sinks in the Red Sea, their loot would be pushed to the edge of the map making it easily accessible. This means people can't run into the out of bounds area to try and keep you away from their loot. The smaller world events are also getting updated in Season 9. This includes Megs, Krakens, Shipwrecks, and Fog. These should now spawn more frequently in the world and it will also be anywhere in the map rather than before where it was just being pushed to the map edges. For those who are interested in why this was an issue, it's basically because of all the new content that was added over the past several years basically made it so that there was just no room for that older content. So they fixed this and now any of these things can spawn anywhere on the map. I'm really excited for the return of Fog because it feels like it's been gone for a long time. Another cool addition is to the Captain's Log, where it will actually track what you do in-game and at what in-game time. I think that's a pretty neat little update that will actually make you care to look at the logbook more. We also have some changes to the Hunter's Call, with a new representative taking Merrick's place at Steven Spoils, as well as a new bait crate for fishing available from the Merchant's Alliance. Players can now also sell Hunter's Call items to the Sovereign, but if you instead sell it at a seat post, they will give you 1.5 times the amount of gold for it. So you'll get a better deal going to the seat post, however it will be a nice feature just to be able to sell everything at the Sovereign now, other than Reaper items. However, this next change is probably going to be my favorite of everything added in Season 9, and this is changes to the Harpoon. I would say this is on par with the storage crate transfer that was added in Season 5, but for Season 9, now when you Harpoon Treasure, it will automatically be placed on your ship, as well as at the Sovereign Tent when you Harpoon any treasure off your ship or from wherever, it's going to be added onto that little loading dock thing. 
This sounds like a small change, but I can definitely see this being a major upgrade when playing, just in terms of making the game a lot faster and easier to play. Looking at cosmetics though, starting in Season 9 you'll be able to use doubloons to bypass seasonal rewards. Now I know this is something that some people are going to be either really excited about or really upset by. In my opinion, they always said that these rewards were going to come back eventually at some point, so I'm not too upset by it, but you know, it's still kind of like, it feels like no cosmetics and see if these will ever be rare because they just keep bringing back everything. But for those of you that missed out, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to get some of these cool rewards from the past. And of course, with every new season comes a new season pass and plunder pass. These both look like they have some really great looking cosmetics and I'm excited to get my hands on them. The season pass may be one of the best passes we have ever gotten actually. If you're interested in the plunder pass, be sure to keep a lookout for my before you buy guide on it when the season launches next Thursday. We also got new stuff in the Pirate Emporium like the new Sea Serpent set as well as the new Ship Crest for the Lodestar set. These both also look really great. But if you want to get any of those cosmics, you're going to need some ancient coins, which you can get for free by participating in the anniversary event. I cover everything you need to know about it in the anniversary video that's here on screen. But if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you a like and subscribe. And check back next week because I'll be releasing tons of content covering everything about Season 9. For now though, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye y'all.